7 Action News starts right now. Go, 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 go. It's just big. I'm actually in a car and I'm looking at a tornado right now. Okay. Yes, we're getting multiple calls for multiple touchdowns. You need to get yourself as safe as possible. Saw my swing set go by, so I took the kids and we ran into the storage room. We just shut the door and prayed and, um, and held hands and stuff. And we kept calling our husbands and telling them not to come home. It's just unbelievable the amount of damage that's gone on. March tornado aftermath. Incredible video and stories of survival. We've learned within the hour that one of three confirmed tornadoes was an EF3. We have live Team 7 coverage beginning with anchor Stephen Clark and our chief meteorologist Dave Rexroth and Dexter. You guys are in the area where that EF3 went through. How are people coping tonight? I'd say probably they're coping pretty well. I think people got down to business rather quickly, and, and resolve would be the word I use, Dave. To, Absolutely. For the mood of the people, they just got to work cleaning up. But if we take a look around, I mean, this house obviously behind us, they've been trying to board this up here today. Right. There's a tractor moving around beside us, getting rid of a house that is no longer there. And it's amazing to me that, as a, like you said, starting even last night, last night the, you were here, the mood was kind of dazed and confused. Yeah, I think people just kind of wandering around looking and saying, now what do we do? And it was dark, you know, and there wasn't much you could do. First right. light this morning, though, uh, you know, all the cleaning people all started moving in, the tree services moving in, the construction companies all moving in, the insurance companies all moving in. I mean, and take a look from the chopper. This right. is the mess. And the coordination here is, is amazing. And the people helping people, uh, there are people going by, handing out water, handing out food. Uh, the companies that are here to do a job are cleaning up, but the, the neighborhood and people around that know the neighborhood, they're all here. It's not, it's, uh, I thought it was going to be mass confusion, but it's really organized chaos. <laughs> it and is. It's and going and quite well. And they've opened the roads up pretty nicely. I mean, you can get around. There are still places is, by the way, uh, around Pinckney Road and stuff. The trees are still down and the roads are closed. So you have to worry about those areas if you are driving in the area. If you have no reason to be in this area, though, this really is not a good place to be right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. It is, it is business going on here right now. Absolutely. There were three tornadoes last night, and this was the worst of it. Uh, we get numbers in, data in as it goes along, a, a large part thanks to everybody with the Facebook and the Twitter and, and all the help there. But now we're getting some official numbers. Out of the three tornadoes, this was certainly the worst tornado. 135 to 140 mile per hour winds, the EF3 on the enhanced Vegeta scale. And this is the most impressive thing to me. It was on the ground just over seven miles as it came through this area of northwest uh, Washtenaw County, but at its widest point as it moved through here in this subdivision, 800 miles wide, that's an aircraft carrier long. 800, 800 yards, yards wide. wide. And, and that's eight football fields, you know, end to end to end. So that gives you an idea of the destruction that happened here and along its uh, seven mile path. A tough tornado for sure. You can see uh, evidence of that also, for instance, we're in one of the areas really hard hit. The, the house over here is, is, as I mentioned, totally gone. There's a house right here where the, the roof has fallen down. Right. Uh, a lot of garage doors missing, and, and Dave was informing me on why it is garage doors are particularly vulnerable. To well, we things. talked about this a little bit last night on the air and again today. It, it's the peaks where the wind, when the wind gets to a corner or a peak, it can be the most damaging. Once the wind gets inside a house or a roof line, that's when you have trouble. Garage doors are such a wide expanse without the support, you know, the double cars and, right. and, and the two cars like that. So those are weak points. Once the wind gets inside, that's when it really can do the damage. And structurally, it's, it's almost the, the the house in, uh, disintegrates at times because once the wind's inside, yeah, it's got no place to go. It goes out, out and up, exactly. Yeah. All right, Dave, thank you very much. We have a whole lot to talk about here this evening as we cover this massive storm, this early spring tornado. Very unusual. Dave will talk about that coming up. We have some incredible stories of survival to talk about, the people who jumped right in to help. Uh, but right now, we're going to take it back to you, and uh, we'll be talking to Julie Bonovich in just a couple of moments about that story. Yeah, so much to talk about. Yes. Incredible stories, like you said. Thanks, you guys, for that, and we will be checking in with you in just a few minutes. And the cleanup has only just begun, and people living in the hardest-hit neighborhoods don't even know where to begin. As you can see through the lens of Chopper 7, it is just truly a huge mess out there. 7 Action News reporter Julie Bonovich is live in Dexter now with a look at the insurmountable cleanup or something that certainly seems that way. Julie? Oh, there's so much to do here, and as you've already seen, people are starting. Now, people who can't go back to their homes, they've got shelter set up for them at the middle school and also even the Ann Arbor area, dealing with people who are having flooding issues. And anybody who needs help, call 211. Somebody from the United Way will be there to help you. This is where the tornado hit the hardest, the Huron Meadows subdivision. 100 homes damaged in some way by the tornado. 
13 to 14, completely destroyed. We survived this with no loss of life or, again, significant injury. Uh, that's the testament to a number of different factors. Like the tornado sirens, the sirens went off 26 minutes before the tornado touched down in Dexter on Monday, alerting residents at 5.09 p.m. to take cover. Residents like James yeah, Boynton's wife and kids who were home at the time. She's good, yeah, she was with the three kids. The kids are fine, nobody got a scratch, everything's good. Those who were trapped were immediately rescued by any one of the first responders, police agencies, and fire departments on scene. We'd like to express um, our gratitude to all the first responders in terms of how they address this challenge and to the Dexter residents themselves. The Sheriff's Department is currently assessing the needs of individual residents and public structures before addressing the need for state aid. Before we can determine exactly what resources and needs in the community, we must know what the damage is. Um, we're also in the process of recovery. Recovery is removing debris from the roadways and trying to reopen main thoroughways into town, like the Dexter Pinckney Road that have been shut down for downed trees and power lines. For those who can't go back to their homes tonight, the Red Cross is providing shelter at the middle school. We don't have all the answers yet. Um, as the cleanup continues, um, we may be looking for volunteers, but right now, everybody who's reached out and has called, we're trying to take your name and number down, and if there's an appropriate spot to get people involved, we will. And just to give you an idea of how people are helping out those that have been displaced or can't go back to their homes, the Red Cross has not had to shelter anybody over at the middle school, even though it is available. So nobody has taken advantage of that yet, meaning lots of help from family and friends. Whether or not the middle school will reopen on Monday, authorities are looking for that. And they also say that DTE is working on the electricity and they're hoping to restore power to everybody tonight. We're live in Dexter, Julie Bonovich, 7 Action News. You always see people helping people in these type of situations like right yes. that's the bright spot of a tragedy that's for sure thank you so much Julie well the damage wasn't confined to Dexter a tornado took aim at a home in rural part of Ida located in Monroe County the results are devastating for the homeowner there seven action news reporter Val Clark is there with the details the steps I'm standing on are the only thing left of the porch the elderly couple who lived in this farmhouse for 55 years ran to the basement as the tornado approached. Safely sheltered, they could only hear their roof being ripped off, windows being blown out, and Chevy Lumina hurling through the air, landing upside down. And upside down describes their life today in this tiny rural town, 10 miles from the state line, where old timers made their living off the land. No, they didn't see the twister, but their neighbor did. It's gonna touch down again. He took these pictures of it, twirling hypnotically through the sky, then touching down, tearing up everything in its path, and spewing debris across vacant cornfields. While camera shy Ben was photographing the tornado, his camera shy mom rushed outside to make sure the family's show horses were safe. In all, six champion horses were spirited out of harm's way. They are still a little spoofed today. But the cats, they could care less. I have to have my door open or I can't hear the siren. Eventually, at the Ida Township Community Center, we met some town folk who were not camera shy. They're grateful the damage was limited to one home and vividly recall the last time a tornado tore through the town next door. Two years ago, June 6, a tornado hit Dundee. They've checked on the couple at the old farmhouse who are now staying with their son, and they are eager to help. Well, everybody wonders what they can do to help. And that's what you're trying to figure out today. Right. The couple's son says they will try to rebuild. He's uprighted their spiritual symbols as a sign of faith. The last time I was in Ida, population 4,900, we were covering a story on soybeans and corn. That used to be what it was known for. From Monroe County, Val Clark, 7 Action News. <laughs> And again, the tornado that struck Dexter was an EF3 and stayed on the ground for more than seven miles. Chief Meteorologist Dave Rexroth joins us now with a look at the timeline of last night's storm. But before we even get to that, Dave, I've got to ask you, we were talking about that seven miles that it was on the ground, 800 yards right. wide. I, I would tend to think that when you hear 800 yards wide, that that entire neighborhood you're in, that the average viewer would think that it would all be wiped out. How does that not happen? 
Well, I'll tell you what, what happens, Joanne, the, the 800 mile wide is the circulation of, of the funnel, if you will, the tornado on the ground. They look at that by, uh, by damage reports and they actually come out and did a survey today around this area. We'll show you the chopper shots now and you can see almost every single house has an issue. Obviously, some are leveled, some have just shingle and window issues. The storm itself is a large circulation, but within that large circulation, you can certainly have stronger winds. Uh, you think about when you put the paddle of the oar in the water and that little swirl goes back past the canoe, or you're, in a, you're out downtown and the wind gets gusty between the buildings and swirls around the corner. Those are called eddies, and tornadoes we call them suction vortices, and those can be wandering around within the tornado itself, and that's why one house can be hit by that that could have winds uh, 20, 30, 40 percent stronger than the general circulation of the tornado. So within the large tornado itself, uh, that, those individual situations can occur. That's why you see such varying uh, degree of uh, problems out here in terms of destruction. Now, the storm started about 5 o'clock just northwest of here around the Pinckney area. Large hail started forming. We started watching this at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon as a line formed off to our west. And as it came in, this particular storm kind of gained its own identity, strengthened and was moving east and then moved southeast uh, across Washington County. A right turning storm is a particularly strong storm, and that certainly it was the case with this one and a big problem. Let's go back and look at the timeline and how this all developed late yesterday afternoon. Oh my God. Oh my God. I was watching Channel 7. What she saw was a tremendous storm over the Dexter area. We saw an incredible return on radar indicating that there was a tornado and it was not a question. We warned everyone to take cover. Shortly after that came the official tornado warning from the National Weather Service. The Weather Service did their job by putting out a warning. We did our job by getting it out there and we got it out there on the air and we got it out there online and we got it out there through people's mobile platforms. Meteorologist Chris Edwards says people had at least 15 minutes to scramble for safety. Go to your safe place. If you're not sure what your safe place is, your safe place should be in the lowest level. Basement's the best if you have it. We followed the news. We listened to the sirens. Sally Darlow was thankful for that. I just thought it was going to be a storm. Then before 530, the Dexter area was devastated. But it wasn't until we looked in the back that it was... It, it looks like a war zone. And there was more to come. Around 6.50 p.m., Ida Township got blasted. So if you're anywhere in this area and you've been seeing what happened up to the region with the same storm, I know it was a long time ago, but the same storm system, you need to take cover in Monroe County. And so did Columbiaville, north of Lapeer. We're just so thankful no one's hurt. When the whole system works like this, and people do what they need to do and they're safe, that's why I got into this business. It doesn't feel real, but your news helped. Um, not just us, but a lot of families because the reporting was right on. Now, there's a lot of question about this situation yesterday, comparing what happened over the mild and very unusual winter to a very early start to the storm season. It doesn't mean that we have to have more and more problems. We set a record yesterday at 77 degrees, and we are forecasting record heat for quite some time here. I don't want you to have to be nervous about that, though. We'll discuss that in more detail coming up at the forecast with Keenan Smith. You can see from the chopper shots, though, lots of problems, lots of cleanup. This is just getting started, but I will tell you it's been very impressive I've been to these scenes before the amount of cooperation that's going on here and the amount of effort and how quickly this is changing is really really a uh, tribute to what's going on here in southeast Michigan and the people that are involved in the situation guys we'll talk about more record heat and the forecast with Keenan and again whether or not you have to be concerned about that with more storms coming up all right Dave thank you so much and Keenan I'm sitting here thinking we've been so excited about the warm temperatures the 60s the 70s but these unseasonal temperatures are made ingredient for this extreme weather absolutely and you have to have multiple ingredients to get the severe uh, thunderstorm. So we've had very mild days ahead, but it was yesterday that we had all of the ingredients, enough spin in the atmosphere to get these tornado, get these uh, storms rotating. That was the primary concern. Now we're looking at mild weather for this afternoon, temperatures in the 70s, and thankfully, take a look at 7 First Alert radar. It is quiet. We have a little bit in the way of cloud cover out there in a spot or two, but the radar is very quiet and 
We're looking at mild temperatures, at least back out to the west. Jackson at 76 degrees, 70 in Ann Arbor. But the farther east you go, the cooler and cooler it is. In Mount Clemens, we're in the upper 50s, 59 degrees there. We're 66 degrees right now in uh, Port Huron with a wind coming at us out of the southeast. That is late cooling that we're dealing with. Mild weather all the way up to the UP, and we're going to look for mild weather to continue throughout the evening hours at 7 o'clock at 66, 10 o'clock partly cloudy at 61. But we're talking about record heat, as Dave mentioned, over the next couple of days. We'll talk about when we'll break records and when we'll get storms back in the forecast. All right, thank you, Keenan. We are continuing to follow the March tornado aftermath tonight and what you can do to help. The 7 Action News Call for Action team is in Dexter. Bill? That's right. You know, Dexter, there are parts of this town that are completely destroyed. Neighborhoods where every house in the block has suffered some kind of damage. A lot of hurt here. The good news is people are volunteering everywhere. Dexter is a community of angels tonight. That story is coming up about 5.30. Do you feel like a miracle? Because yes. when you look at the damage around in your house and you don't have a scratch. Yes. Uh, I, like I said, I'm, I, I didn't sleep last night, of course. I've been up all, all night and I woke up realizing that I shouldn't even be, be here. So. <laughs> you know, there is not a lot we can do to protect our homes from Mother Nature's wrath. But we can insure our homes so we can recover from a natural disaster like this one. Let's rejoin Stephen. He is in Dexter again now. And Stephen, what action can we take to protect our property? Well, I think first of all, we just have to hope we have really good insurance. These houses behind me here, you can only hope because this one right here, totally gone. With us right now, Jeff Ormond uh, with Allstate to talk a little bit about how we go about doing this. Now, first of all, for people who are perhaps underinsured right now, this ought to be a reminder to make sure you're, you're up to date. Exactly. Insurance is so important, and this is a reason why people buy insurance, to make sure that their property is protected. First thing this morning, I know your agents, uh, your adjusters were out here in this neighborhood. What's the process for people, your insurance company, other insurance companies? What do people need to go through you know, ASAP? Well, for all state customers, uh, we had our agency owners and claim adjusters, as you said, come out and uh, either reach our customers by phone or go door to door to make sure they were okay and also to help them start the claim filing process. And for all state customers, they can call 1 800 54 STORM or our ex or access the uh, internet through www.allstate.com and uh, they can also file a claim with their agent. Now what's next? We've got a house right here that I would say is probably uninhabitable. It's got the, the yellow note on the door. you got a house totally gone. What do these people do? Well, an adjuster will be assigned to that homeowner and they'll start talking about additional living expenses. If your home is uninhabitable, uh, insurance companies will typically help you out with additional living expenses, help pay for a hotel and food, clothing to help you get you back on your feet. How long of a road are they talking? It really depends on the claim where uh, some simple damage like uh, hail damage to uh, a total rebuild like we're seeing here behind us. Uh, it really does depend. It can be weeks or, or months. It's going to depend on the amount of damage. All right, good luck to these people. Thank you very much for taking time to talk with us, and I know you're going to be busy here today. Thank you, Steve. Real quick shout out to Bush's Market. They've been great. Last night, of course, they opened their freezers for anybody in the neighborhood who needed to keep their things cold out of their house today. They're walking the neighborhood, giving away water and fruit and food. They've definitely proven themselves to be a community market. Diana, show it back to you. Yeah, they certainly have. Stephen, thanks. We'll check in with you shortly. I guess the big question is, Keenan, anything else brewing? You might see some other weather like this. Uh, yeah, there are thunderstorms possible this weekend. Saturday, a slim chance, but a better chance on Sunday. So although the weekend is going to be mild, we will be watching the skies for the development of storms. And again, Sunday looks like the favorite day. So we'll take a look here and we're talking about a quiet night tonight. Uh, temperatures dropping down to the 50s. Fog will be the concern. Thankfully, we can put a very nice emphasis on this first word. Quiet, no storms in the forecast for tonight. The warmth continues right on through the weekend, but we will have a chance over the weekend and Sunday, the favorite day. Right now, here we are, 7 First Alert Radar. We're looking at quiet conditions, just a couple of clouds out there, primarily to the south and east. And in fact, nothing going on in our neighborhood. 
uh, so very quiet, nothing nearby. In fact, the uh, biggest and strongest thunderstorms are uh, 1,000 miles away from us down across the southeastern U.S. Now, talk temperatures. We're at 72 degrees here in Detroit. That ties the high for the day, so we may break it uh, this evening if we bump up another degree. 72 is our high. Right now in Ann Arbor, we're at 70 degrees. Jackson at 76. Lansing at 78. So the outstanding warmth continues. Now to the east side, we have temperatures that are in the 50s and 60s, and that's because we have a wind. See that? That east wind coming in off of uh, Lake St. Clair. That's cooling you in Mount Clemens and parts of southeastern uh, St. Clair, or rather Macomb Township, and up into St. Clair Township, that wind coming in off of the lakes. Yeah, we have a wind coming in out of the east here in Pontiac, but we're far enough away that that lake influence begins to diminish. That said, it's still a little cooler the farther east you go. So 72, that's the high for the day. The record high, 74. So we're still pretty close, and you can see 46 degrees. That's our average high, so much closer to the record than to what's normal for this time of year. Tonight, we drop down to the 50s. That will allow for some fog to develop across the area. Then we're right back in the 70s tomorrow, but Take a look east side. We're watching some of that cooling, so don't be surprised if you live by one of the lakes that if it's a little cooler there, that's what's going on. Same thing for Sunday. A little bit of that lake cooling with those uh, spotty showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. The jet stream well to the north, and that'll keep the very warm, record warm temperatures around here over the next couple of days. A spotty shower tomorrow, just a 20% chance, a better chance for a Sunday. Now, all of this from Detroit all the way down into the deep south, that's where we could see thunderstorms over the next couple of days. Tomorrow, 75 would tie the record. Better chance at thunderstorms on Sunday at 73. And then take a look. The mild weather holds. We don't see temperatures slide until next Friday. Wow. All right. Thank you, Keenan. And tonight on Action News at 6, you'll hear from a Monroe attorney who survived a car bombing. You'll hear what happened to him and his two sons after the explosion and who may have targeted his family. from Chopper 7 this morning. You can see a woman finds her significant other's guitar in the rubble. He looks happy to get it back, a moment of comfort among the chaos. You know, in the midst of such devastation, sometimes finding something to smile about helps you get by. And one Dexter family demonstrated that today. 7 Action News reporter Kim Russell has a look at what they found that has them asking, is Dorothy and Dexter? after a powerful twister damaged many homes and destroyed others but a construction worker found in this debris an item of dreams we were just trying to clean some of the uh, debris off the car so we pulled it back and uh, started pulling it back i come up here and i look down and i see this red shoe underneath the carpet that's right a ruby red slipper mark santavi says he found himself looking on this street in dexter for dorothy perhaps once again she wasn't in kansas anymore due to a tornado it's kind of ironic and, and humorous at the same time the family that lives in the home where the slipper was found has a message for dorothy don't follow the yellow brick road or look somewhere over the rainbow to find your shoe come on down to dexter i've got your shoe for you size five that's oh. just sad <laughs> Dorothy. I just want to return it to someone. <laughs> the Lear family says joking about this ruby red slipper has brought them relief as they deal with the devastation caused by this twister to their car, to their home. And they say somehow this twister has delivered the same message expressed in The Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. And for the Lears, as you can see by this sign, home isn't a house. Home is family. And amazingly, everyone is safe and sound. In Dexter, Kim Russell, 7 Action News. Incredible stories coming out of that town tonight. And we are continuing to follow the March tornado aftermath and the path of destruction in several communities. The 7 Action News call for action team is in Dexter with what you can do to help. Bill? There is a lot of help needed, Joanne and Diana. This is the home of Wendy and Scott Martin, and there are entire blocks of homes like this and even worse. The good news is there are tons of volunteers pouring into Dexter. You can be one of those people to help out. I'll tell you how in just a couple minutes.
You're watching 7 Action News. The tornado that ripped apart homes in Dexter also flattened everything in its path, including trees. The winds reached up to 140 miles per hour and traveled several miles through Washtenaw County. A live look now from Chopper 7 shows the destruction left in the tornado's wake. 7 Action News anchor Stephen Clark and Chief Meteorologist Dave Rexroth join us now live from Dexter. Hi, guys. Hey, how you doing? We're just uh, kind of out here watching the cleanup. I mean, people really got to work quickly today getting this thing cleaned up. The house that was knocked down right behind us is now almost completely in dumpsters to be taken away, and they'll start from the ground up and rebuild that one. It's impressive, though, that as you go around the neighborhood, everything's being, almost everything's being done hand, hand, oh, yeah. hand to hand. They're walking back and forth to the dumpsters and, and helping each other out. Uh, I really am impressed at how quick things are changing here, but also how everybody's helping everybody else. You're sp speaking about helping somebody, here's a unique thing we found out. Some guy has set up a website. It's called DexterLostAndFound.com and what he's doing is urging people who find anything that looks like it may have blown from the storm and sometimes these things travel miles right. if you find something then you can post it that what you found something if you've lost something post it there a place to go DexterLostAndFound.com just a unique way to use technology three young uh, boy teenagers came up to me today and they had two ruby slippers oh, seriously. and they were trying to go through the neighborhood and find who belonged to the slippers and they look for Dorothy yeah, exactly that was an easy one. so that's a good way to connect uh, that way too now as we look at some of the, the the damage of this thing we were just speculating i mean obviously you can tell the path of the storm and, and we can see that from the damage down especially in hindsight when you take a look at the aerials and so forth you see where it's going but how do you actually figure out the size of this storm this the, the power of it well when it's happening we look at the radar we look at you know things that are going on with the wind speeds the wind uh, diameter that kind of thing of the storm but when it's all said and done the way to make sure you got it right is to go back and do a survey this one 135 to 140 mile an hour maximum wow. winds that's an ef3 on the on the enhanced vegeta scale and the folks at the weather service rich pullman is one of them that heads this up they go out and do the surveys and we've been talking a lot about this crazy weather so far and the early start to the storm season and the connection to march take a look the thing that we are is most notable about this event, uh, we have uh, EF2, EF3 tornadoes in our history, but most of those are occurring in April, May, and June especially. June is actually our peak for the tornado season. Up until this year, we only had nine uh, tornadoes in the month of uh, March, and so we've uh, uh, we've added one in Midland County of, uh, a couple days ago, and then we had three uh, just yesterday. Now that does not mean we have to have more in March, oh. although yesterday record high, today record high, and several forecasts for the next week ahead, but there is an ingredients package that has to come together, and it's very different atmosphere today and going forward. There might be some thunderstorms on Saturday night or Sunday. Mm. It doesn't mean you have to get nervous about what happened just because it's warm. The weirdest winter ever yes. continues. It continues. Right, thanks, Dave. Back to you guys. All right. Both of you, thank, thank you very you. much. Well, tornadoes are scary enough for adults, but for kids, they can be traumatic. 7 Action News reporter Kimberly Craig spoke to a four-year-old who has some advice for other kids, big and small. The construction workers are helping me clean up my house. Even with the chaos of cleaning up going on around your four-year-old Avery doesn't seem phased by any of it. Not even the tornado that ripped through her Dexter neighborhood. I thought it was really scary, but it was a little scary for me. Avery told me just after she, her mom, and baby sister returned home yesterday, they could hear the wind whipping around in loud noises. It sounded like boom. Avery's mom rushed her and her little sister into the basement where they all hid here in the closet. It felt like it was right on top of us. I heard a bam. And they went over that. So we all ducked down. The mom was holding off like this. Avery's mom was texting her husband and her own mom one text telling them that they had been hit. Thankfully, they were okay, even though Avery says she could tell her mom was worried. Well, she was panicking. So I asked Avery what I ought to do if I ever have to brace for a tornado like she did. Don't worry, just be calm and duck heads down. In Dexter, Kimberly Craig, 7 Action News. We've got, oh. we've got to talk about that. That's the best <laughs> advice in the world, coming from the mouths of babes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sweet little Avery. Well, you know, offers of help are pouring in to help families like Avery's, from relief organizations to stores to you. Everyone wants to pitch in. 7 Action News reporter Bill Spencer is in Dexter, where in some places there are more volunteers than victims. Bill? That's right, Diana, Joanne. You know, 
parts of uh, Dexter look like a giant jigsaw puzzle turned upside down. Pieces of people's homes everywhere. This is the home of Wendy and Scott Martin. They took shelter in the basement last night when this massive storm hit and the swing set blew by the window. That's when they knew they were in trouble. The good news is this is a community of angels tonight. Everybody is helping. Here in Dexter, the slogan is, we take care of our own. That's why an army of store employees from Bush's supermarket hit the streets as early as 6.30 last night to pass out badly needed food and water. We brought over two truckloads of uh, water into the area. Um, but we've served over 400 hot dogs today alone. We're feeding people till 7 o'clock. We've gone door to door with snacks, fruit, water. Here at Mill Creek Middle School, the American Red Cross is busy setting up an emergency shelter that will handle 200 beds and offer food and water to the tornado survivors. We're prepared to offer shelter, food, uh, some of the basic things that they might need, uh, shampoo, toothpaste, toothpaste. Bill, I seen uh, about approximately 60 homes totally destroyed that were wiped off the foundation. Already the school is stocked with plenty of food and refreshments, food that was actually brought in by average people. They dropped off Panera coffee, we got hot coffee, we got small breads, we got danishes, we got fresh fruit, bananas. And inside the Huron Farm subdivision, where some of the worst destruction can be seen, folks like Tom Barberi are volunteering their time to pick up debris. I have three young boys that can do a lot of work, so we just came in. I live north of town. We don't have any power, but, you know, we're blessed that nothing was done with our house, so we just came in to help other people clean off their property and, you know, get the debris out. Yes, everywhere you look, it seems, people are pitching in to help their neighbors that have been hurt so badly in the storm. Ask them why. They'll tell you. It's simple. It's our community. This is Dexter. And, you know, everybody rises to help out, and this is what you do in a small community. That's exactly what they do. This is, again, Wendy and Scott Martin. They took shelter last night. Uh, Wendy, what has it meant to you to see all these people jumping in to help you? It's been amazing to see how many people, I mean, last night even, Bush's, um, the grocery store up the street, was pushing down carts with cases of water. Um, there's been, you know, teams of people from churches, high school kids. They're here. They have gloves on. They want to, they want to know what to do. And, you know, unfortunately, we kind of, we don't really know, you know, at this point, but... It'll come to you in the coming it, days. <laughs> it will, it yeah. will. But they've been bringing by food and water and, and constantly. I mean, we've had people come by with flowers and Wonderful. just a ton of uh, support. This community is amazing. It is. Thank you very much. This is Bill Spence reporting live in Dexter. Back to you. All right, Bill. Thank you so much. You said it best. Dexter is a community of angels, and we are certainly seeing people pouring out their hearts. The destruction, incredible. Now, Seven is giving you a chance to help our neighbors neighbors get back on their feet. Log on to WXYZ.com or call 734-971-5300. Your donation to the American Red Cross will help our neighbors or with other disasters just like this. It's just one more way 7 is taking action for you. Coming up tonight on Action News at 6, Governor Snyder tours the damage left behind in Dexter. What he has to say about helping these victims tonight at 6. understand even where to go now what do you do half my garage door was there so I uh, rammed my car out like an action movie and put the dogs in and we have our cat so everybody's safe so much sadness and destruction I guess only a bright spot is that at least there's a nice day today to do some of the necessary cleanup that's that's for sure the stories are incredible they really are let's get to Keenan okay. Smith yeah he's gonna talk about the forecast and what the weekend looks like absolutely and there's a lot of cleanup that has to be done and the weather will cooperate over the next couple of days it will remain mild right now downtown 68 degrees winds coming at us out of the east southeast and that's the only thing keeping us out of the 70s the farther east you go the cooler the temperatures 70 in Ann Arbor Jackson at 76 and 
in Romulus at the airport 72, but we look at 59 degrees right now in Mount Clemens, 66 support here on. We have lake cooling all up and down the east side. Winds coming at us 5 to 10 miles an hour. Still, though, even where we're in the 60s and upper 50s, it's mild for this time of year and it feels good. The radar is quiet. Nothing expected tonight. Our weather will be quiet. If you're making plans tomorrow, you're up early for St. Patrick's Day. 51 degrees looking good during the morning hours and looks like we're going to get to the record once again tomorrow. The record is 75. That's our forecast So very mild weather. We're going to keep the mild weather around right on through the weekend into next week. Showers possible, particularly on Sunday. That's a quick check of the forecast. We'll be back with more action news at five coming up right after this. I just recovered my hard drive with my new album on it, so I'm happy about that, and I'm trying to find my other Mac with my stuff on it. I, I prayed to God that they were safe the whole time, the whole drive home, and I was so happy when I saw my wife that we just embraced each other and were had a moment. We have an amazing community here in Dexter, and I know that um, we're going to rebuild, and it's we're, we're not going anywhere. Aside from the homes, the storms took no victims. But you can imagine the terrifying thoughts a mother would have knowing her daughter was home alone as the tornado got closer. 7 Action News reporter Smitha Koloki has the story of one mom who kept driving even though her SUV had been flipped around by the winds. We are in the heart of the neighborhood, and as you can see, just about every single house here has been either severely damaged or destroyed. But that storm wasn't enough to keep a mother away from her daughter. She drove right through that storm to make sure she was safe. It was raining so hard that people were breaking in front of me. I was, all, all you could see was like little bits of red where you could see brake lights because it was raining so hard. And all I could think of was, I have to get home, I have to get home, you know, move, move, move. It was around 5.45 and Sandy Pollard was on her way home from work and nothing, not even a storm that caused this much devastation could stop her. My wiper blades on my car, passenger side is fine. My side all twisted in a funny shape so I couldn't see. So I'm trying to stick my hand out the window every little bit so I could see where I was going. And I, I, I kept getting hit by things. I was hitting things. At one point, this metal rod somehow got lodged in her bumper. But as a mother will tell you, when their child is in trouble, there is little that can stop them. For Sandy, that meant braving the whirling winds that even tossed her SUV around. It was raining so hard I had to stop. And when I stopped, my car was being moved right to left, and then all of a sudden my car did a whole, like, 360. And that's when I realized, oh, my God, I, I am in a tornado. And at that same moment, while Sandy used her Bluetooth headset to talk to her daughter Amanda, the line went dead. And I thought, oh my God, I'm too late. She's dead. She crashed. Blinded by the storm, Sandy left to faith and hit the gas one more time, safely making it to her home, which was hardly touched by the storm. Hard to believe when you just look right across the street. You know, I heard this banging on the door and I heard her voice. And I mean, she was screaming, but still just to hear her voice was everything. I mean, I, I really thought I had lost my mom. It took Sandy's hands 45 minutes to stop shaking after they left the steering wheel. Now they mostly stay embraced around her daughter. From Dexter, Smitha Koloki, 7 Action News. With the destruction so incredible, a reminder tonight, 7 is giving you a chance to help our neighbors get back on their feet. Log on to WXYZ.com or call 734-971-5300. Your donation to the American Red Cross will help our neighbors or help with other disasters just like this. This is just one more way 7 is taking action for you. Tom Lydon is here now with a look at what's next on 7 Action News at 5. Tom? I'll tell you, we've been waiting almost 30 hours for our local basketball teams to take the court for March Madness. But finally, Michigan, Michigan State, and the University of Detroit Mercy will hit the courts tonight. We'll get you caught up on all the latest from all three sites right after the break. to get off the couch on days like this basketball action from noon to midnight and finally tonight our teams hit the floor let's get a feeling of the flavor from our reporters with the teams we're going to start with matt shepherd in nashville with the wolverines hey matt tom nashville is about an hour flight from metro detroit 459 miles overall no matter the mode of transportation they are well represented here in nashville walter and tyler erdman actually are from this area but walter grew up in wyandotte you've been following the wolverines yes i've been following them for a few years and I think they're going to be great. I think tonight they're going to get out there and win. I think we're going to go a long way. Tyler, how far do you have them going in your bracket? I have them going all the way. 
all the way to a championship game. That's the fever they have here. Michigan State has a much shorter commute. Brad Galley has tagged along to Columbus with the Spartans. Brad? Thank you, Matt. We are in Columbus. The Spartans don't get on the court for four hours, but these fans have been here all day. Now, you've been painting, you've been painting this city green. When did you arive in Columbus? Got here last night, ready. Ready, ready for go. the game, ready. Can't wait. Can't wait. Now, if you think the Spartans are going to win on their own accord, you are wrong. It's all about this good luck charm. Tell me about these beads. These are the Kakui nuts. Uh, I live in Columbus, Ohio, and people around here always try to say they're Buckeyes, but they are not. They're they are mistaken. They are. they are absolutely mistaken. Now, the Spartan fans in this town, they're all talking about Draymond Green. Why is he such a special player, and why is he the key tonight? Day Day is a great Spartan. He's going to lead us to a national championship. Yeah! You heard it, a national championship. That's the story from Columbus. Now to Andy Ketty with the Titans in Omaha. All right, we got Titan Nation behind me. They are ready for Detroit and Kansas. Unbelievable. And get this, Mike has brought a message. Mike, what's your message? Well, I'd like to give a shout out to Titan Reggie. I mean, he is one of the best super fans uh, in Titan Nation. So I'm very proud for the Titans. This is hopefully a special season. All right, Titan Reggie here in spirit. And Chloe has got a prediction for the game. Chloe, what do you think? Titans and Jayhawks. My money's on Detroit. It's going to be a big upset for Watch Out Kansas. All right, Detroit ready to shock the world. A 15 hasn't beaten a 2 in 11 years. It could happen tonight in Omaha. Tom, back to you. All right, that's Andy Kendi, who's from our ABC affiliate in Omaha. Thanks to all the guys for setting the scene. And how about Titan Reggie Hall, oh, our own producer, yeah. getting a shout out there. He's in Omaha, so hopefully the Titans get him a win. Yeah, I hope so. Go Spartans, uh, go thank all you the so teams, much. right? Much more still ahead on Action News at 6. Stephen Clark joins us from the hardest hit areas from the tornadoes. Stephen? You know, amid all this destruction and all this damage, the miracle is no one was killed, nobody was even seriously hurt, and no small thanks to a Washington County deputy. His incredible story of rescue coming up on Action News at 6.